Does anyone wish to speak in favor of the proposed amendments? In that case, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion that the proposed amendments be approved? I approve the uh, bicycle amendment. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion <coughs> carries. Mr. Wood, I'll turn it over to you to departmental reports. Yes, sir, Mayor Klein. At your most recent meeting of the Bond Commission, they considered uh, the 60% design recommendations on City Walk and the 30% design recommendations on River Walk. Both were uh, recommended to come forward to City Council for your consideration. So we have those here tonight to be presented. And after each one of those, we would like for City Council to uh, approve those with any changes that you may have. Um, and the first up is a City Walk presentation by Ron Huffman, Principal Landscape Architect with AMEC Foster Wheeler. Hey everybody. Hello. Speaking of alternate transportation forms, I think we're going to talk about City Walk tonight. Um, so I'll take a few minutes and I'm going to walk you through City Walk from the west end all the way to the east end. Okay, I'll take you on a little journey here through City Walk. So I know what I'm doing here. Um, so if I can call your attention to the screen. Okay. Where, where we are is uh, some of you probably have already seen, seen, seen a lot of this or, or know, but um, our primary job was to take that master plan that was done and turn it into construction documents. So at this point, we've generated about 250 drawings. And what I've done is taken and created sort of a courtesy rendering to walk you through just out of that construction drawing package. So it may not be the prettiest rendering in the world, but I did it just so you could see kind of where we are, because we're, we're really into to the heavy engineering of the project. Um, uh, there's also some aesthetic components that we'll talk about as well. And as part of the rendering, I wanted to just highlight um, the railroad right away because that's everybody's favorite topic of discussion. And just to communicate that you know, about 85% of the project is out fully outside of the right away. And I just want to make sure you knew where those edges were. So on this drawing, the left hand side is, is 4th Street. And the big red box up at the top would be the proposed playground, I mean the proposed restroom for the playground area. You all know where the playground is. Okay. So as we wor work our way from left to right, the greenway is actually on both sides of the railroad to the north and to the south. Um, we've, as I go through this presentation, we, we've got some pop-outs that will highlight where some of the unique features are as we walk through, walk through the, uh, the City Walk Greenway. To the far right of that illustration is the addition of a bridge across 3rd Street okay, to make for a safe crossing there. We have a series of, of stories to tell as we translate the theme, Life Well Crafted. As part of the master plan, they asked for unique things like sculpture and signage and identifying components. So th those are illustrated here and showing sort of locations where we've, we've developed some sculpture and some, some masonry seating areas and things. Most of the design following Life Well Crafted focuses on using stone and timber, um, natural materials um, that all kind of reflect the culture here in this part of North Carolina. Um, as we go through, you see seat, seat benches in many cases to accommodate the width that we desire in the city walk, whether it's 12 or 14 feet, sometimes it requires some, some, some wall embankments. And we thought if we're going to put in those walls, why not make them seat walls? And then do some custom design to them to, to reflect, again, some of the unique crafts that are, are, are available in this part of the Carolinas. So this is just an example of sort, sort of how we might play with a stone bench and uh, along the trail. So we keep going with this. We've, some of you have probably already seen, we've come up with a series of interactive sculptures. So this is a kinetic sculpture. Um, and you'll see more at Union Square and along the, along the trail. And the intent is that these 
provide visual interest along the whole length of the trail. This is just one spot, but um, this is, would be kinetic and it would move with, move with the wind. Um, we keep going, let me see how, how we're doing here. Get to Union Square, again, if you look at this sheet, the, the left-hand side shows the Third Street Bridge entering over into Union Square. In Union Square, the, the white, what look like little pillows there in the middle, that's the shade sails though, so for your point of reference. We created, we, we're really um, it, it excited about, about Union Square and that it really is the heart of the community. We really want to make it an exciting place and a destination when you're on, on the Greenway. So we've looked at creating some, some central green space, treating it like a true town square. Um, we're, again, we're introducing sculpture along the whole length of the, of the shopping area on the northern edge. We've taken the greenway and we've run it along the rail and along the front of the shops so that we, we kind of embrace the, the, um, the whole area. We've, there's no net loss in parking. We've about, uh, it, it's about the same, but we've reconfigured to, to consolidate open space. We've shifted the, let's see, the Miracle of Hickory Monument over here. The, uh, all the, we still have the, the 30, approximately 30 feet clear for all the outdoor dining and entertaining that's encouraging, encouraging in, front, uh, in front of the shops. Um, when we worked with the bond subcommittees and the bond commission, we kind of had an interactive back and forth trying to discuss how we, we, we um, either make revisions or, or make it even better. So we, we've added, we did a shade study to look at how we could, we could add shade to, to the um, Union Square area. You're starting to see a hint of some of our sculptural pieces there. Um, the, uh, and it is just a, this is really a cartoon. About, I don't want anyone to think that, that that gap between the buildings where the mural is, that we're recommending elimination of the mural or anything like that. I mean, we use this as a cartoon study for us to get a sense of the space and feel and the character of the area, if it feels right, looks right, and again, study shade. Uh, we don't have every outdoor dining area shown there. That They're just there for illustration, but we started to play with where sculpture and lighting and, and lawn panels would be. Uh, again, kind of changing, changing a view. Um, I feel like if we could consolidate some of the green space and put it all together, that would have a, a, a stronger visual impact as a town square. Again, you start to see some of the sculptural ideas, which I'll explain here in a minute. Uh, looking back the other direction, see the, the farmer's market on the left side of the, um, of the uh, sort of cartoon illustration there. Playing with some unique pieces of sculpture, out there, the, uh, the the central piece, part of the life well crafted. We were we we spent a lot of time understanding how we could work with wood and and the feel of wood and the look of wood. I'm not saying this will be wood, but we're we're trying to play with the look of it. But the inside of it is is actually would be a mirrored surface, and it's it's actually a a, a walk-in kaleidoscope where the the um, the uh, citizen, whoever, could, could walk inside it and, and experience the feel of what it's like to be inside a kaleidoscope. The others adjacent, the, the, the blue, the lighter blue colored, are actually movable. They would be lit from the inside, and you could walk up and, and spin them with your, with your, with your hand. Um, we started playing with what that looks like at night and how that might feel, and we realized that Union Square has a, has a, a strong attendance in the evening as well with and we thought that if we could, we could create these, um, um, the, the, the focal point of the kaleidoscope and the, the kinetic sculptures and stretch it out along the front of those facades that we could draw interest from Third Street and, and uh, is it Second Street and, and draw interest all the way into the shops in the center and create sort of a focal point. So, so that's more of Union Square. We also, the restroom, we've highlighted, I think it's gonna pop up. Redesigned, we went through uh, seven or eight different designs for Union Square, and this is kind of what we settled on. Um, 
and, and I don't think anybody would argue that we, we need a new restroom on Union Square. So that's, and again, we're playing with stone and, and timber and, and materials that we consider appropriate for the, the theme life well crafted. We're adding some volume so we actually can get some upper level storage in there too for Christmas decorations and things like that. So we keep going. The, the, there's a whole assortment of mixture of monuments and plaques and things uh, at Union Square. And of course, one of them is the cannon. And we've relocated the cannon, repositioned it. I suppose I might be able to go back and show you. I guess the cannon is, is sitting right out here right now. And we're, we're looking at putting it right in this area there. And we actually thought that it was very simple additions, we could create a very nice veterans memorial out of it. And what we've illustrated here is shows the cannon, but in the pavement around it, we're embedding like key terms that we think of when we think of veterans, like honor, sacrifice, courage. So we have all that sort of embedded in a, in a pavement ring around the, the cannon. And we have a couple of markers off to either end that could be used to for either donors or recognition of the service members from from uh, from Hickory. So it's just a way to take the cannon and as sort of a an isolated object and actually turn it into a into a sort of a celebration of a veterans memorial. The the flags you see in the background, you, you, you all know you have the thirteen or more, I guess you have sixteen flags out there in the square, but we're consolidating those flags in this area too, because we think that draws more attention to the to the veterans memorial. Um, so we keep moving down the square now. This would be where City Hall is right now. So we're just continuing um, with, the, with the, the broad width of, of the City Walk Greenway. The, that little icon you can't see, but one of the things we worked through with the, with the Bond Commission were, and one of the, the strengths we bring to the team is we like, we, we think that the City Walk is more than just uh, uh, 12 or 14 foot bike ped route, there's a story to be told along City Walk, and the, the, there's stories, plural stories, and we've crafted about 11 different stories that could be told, again, to add interest as you're walking down or biking uh, along City Walk, and we've developed um, a series of plaques that would be embedded in, in various locations along City Walk to tell some of the different stories, and th that's just an example of it right there. We keep going. Some of this is as we, we're approaching the uh, Highway 127 crossover. This is where the, the bridge, the, the unique iconic bridge, has been placed um, between May, Main Avenue Northeast and the railroad. We did the double helix bridge, and there to the, to the lower right is the restroom, and that's exactly across from where Transportation Insights, the, the parking area, is there. And you've seen, oh, I'm certain you've all seen this before, what it's going to look like, because um, that's not a new sketch. I think we've presented that in the past. But we've worked out details like railings and lighting and um, engineering over Highway 127, how that's going to work. We show as an option, if we look at the restroom, this area behind it, we initially, it's all part of city property, so we initially just set it up as a lawn area with trees, but again, in discussion with the Bond Commission, came up with the idea that it could be a, a dog park, especially with if it's a starting point for the trail, it could be a place to, to park a transportation insights and use it as a dog park. So that's showing an alternative scheme where that same green area, if we just fence it and make it a little more dog friendly, we could, we could provide a, a pretty low cost additional amenity along the, the City Walk Greenway as a, as a dog park. Um, so, all right, I'll back up. Um, those of you who know when you come down Main Avenue um, Northeast and the Arboretum's up here, directly across the Arboretum and when you come off, come across Highway 127, there's a pretty good grade change right there. Pretty severe drop from the railroad. And we believe there'll be a, a need for a retaining wall there. So again, we, we think that that retaining wall could be articulated with some face stone to add some uniqueness, again, that celebrates the, <coughs> the life well craft theme. And that, that, that's what that represents. 
as we keep going along City Walk towards uh, beyond the, the Arboretum intersection is right here. You see Second Avenue here. That wonderful intersection with the yield and, and everything that's going on. We're, we're, we're proposing the, the, the roundabout in that location. There you get a better handle of, of the roundabout. Um, there's, um, and it, it's very much a transition because at the roundabout, or just, just to the east of the roundabout, we, um, Main Avenue Northeast is four lanes wide, and um, this goes back to our, our, our presentation back in March, but we decided to, the, the traffic volumes don't warrant that, and so we've recommended lane dieting and taking the four lanes to three and using the fourth lane as the location for the extension of City Walk. Um, and, and it has some advantages. It, it's simply, it's in your right of way. Everything we show there is, is, is in your curb, okay? It's behind the curb. Um, and with the thought that, of course, it's unobstructed, all the utilities that are on the north side of the road cause us some headache with relocation. It's a lot of driveways and curb cuts. So we take that, that fourth lane away, and it becomes a very clean path for um, City Walk as we head towards the, the Holler Mill area. The, uh, and, I'll, and I'll quickly note, this is the only area that we're, we have, we're, we need discussions, if you will, with Norfolk Southern, because at this point, according to survey records, their right-of-way pops out to 200 mm -hmm. feet. So both Main Avenue Northeast and Main Avenue South are all contained within the, um, the right-of-way. Our strategy was to, to stay away from the railroad and keep everything within your existing pavement. Okay, so it's all, everything we're showing occurs within what you are already currently maintaining as a road. We go to the Holler Mill area, and actually this is where it, it turns and heads towards Lenore Rhine. We added a little trailhead parking area here at Fifth Avenue. This, currently the alignment is askew here, so as part of this intersection, We've done a little reconfiguration there to create a better um, crossing, if you will, at that intersection. And by doing that, it allows us a little room to create some focal plaza spaces in there. This is where we're using this as, as just an illustration to show you we've developed a whole family of signage. Um, and the signage is borrowing from the current wayfinding that you already have, have recently put in place. We're using the font and colors. Uh, they're a little bit taller, and they're designed to, to reflect some of the themes and the stories that we're trying to tell. But these become sort of iconic focal points as you're entering the, the city walk. Again, looking at a different type of, of interior lit sculpture in the Holler Mill area. Again, feeling more like mills and, and crate. And this is where it turns towards uh, Lenore Rhine. And I think, I know that was fast, but I, or to me that was fast. It may not have been fast to you guys. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I tried to get through it as quick as I could for y'all. We had great interaction over the summer with the Bond Commission coming up with all this. So I, my hat's off to them because they worked very hard with us on all this to this point. And I did neglect to mention Harold Thurston with our team is sitting here too as well. All right, questions and discussion with Council. I'd like to know specifically where were we on a timeline with Norfolk Southern. That's, that's um, your expertise is in that area and um, that seems to be sort of a hold up and I'd like to let us, because we're all about um, now a schedule and keeping it within budget, so where does that fall? Sure. Well, <laughs> my personal expertise is design, so I'll, I'll, okay. I'll do my best with Norfolk Southern. Mine's, mine's more the creative the right brain stuff, but um, we have um, made two submittals to Norfolk Southern. Uh, we followed their procedures, we have the contact person, um, we've worked through the region and through the Atlanta, we know the person, he's got the drawings, we've actually done two submittals, kind of ignored the first submittal, but once he understood, I believe that, that 85 or 90 percent was not in their right of way. It, I think he got more interest in them looking at it. So the most recent contact was in October, and we're just looking for his blessing. But we have reached out, made two submittals, followed exactly to the letter what we're supposed to do, and we just need him to respond. That's where we are. 
Here's what you told us in your proposal letter. This is before we hired you. You said, it would appear there are a handful of important issues to be addressed during the design process. Planning for agency coordination and approvals, including Norfolk Southern Railway. So you identified this as an important issue before we even hired you to do the job. You told us on December the 20th, 2016, 360, 336 days ago, that you had talked to Norfolk Southern. I don't know what that means. Um, you said you personally are not a Norfolk Southern guy. You tell us in your in your in your documents that you have a Norfolk Southern guy. His name's Neil Langtree, Lang something. Nate. N Nate. Nate Landsberger. Yes. Nate Landsberger. Good. So, um, I mean, all that's to say, it's um, we're concerned if we don't have. <laughs> If we don't, what, what do we do if we don't get the blessing of Norfolk Southern? And this idea of, uh, well, I tried, they submitted, it's gone to a black hole. That doesn't, that, that doesn't help us as a council and certainly doesn't help our citizens. So what do we do if we don't get the okay from Norfolk Southern? That's a question. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. Um, I guess first, we did work with Dane. At our interview, we actually brought the procedures on how to work with, mm -hmm. and Nate actually helped us identify who we need to talk to, um, mm -hmm. including the North Carolina rep as well as the city of Atlanta. So we've done everything we know how to do to give them the drawings. And at this point, if they're stonewalling us, we need to badger them, clearly, to get them to review the drawings. Um, and we don't, if they say no, I think we there's, there's far bigger issues there that we need to, to figure out. Um, the, it's your road. Um, and, and, and the projects I've done in the past, um, I use the term prescriptive rights, but I've got two other projects identical to this that the, the roads fall within railroad right of way, but because you've been maintaining and taking care of that road for 140 or 150 years, you have a prescriptive right to do some of these things. So. If Norfolk Southern is disagreeable, we probably all need to sit down and have a talk as to how we want to move forward. But in it, 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 my professional opinion, there's nothing to stop you from, from keeping on doing your project. Absolutely nothing. Uh, what about time frames as to um, you know when we decide? It, I, look, in my world, it helps to put deadlines out there. Sure. And uh, I know Norfolk Southern certainly is not going to respond to a, a, a deadline we give them. But for our, for our process, as you guys continue to work, um, a month, two months, how, how, uh, 60 days to sort of let you badger them, and then we sit down, what's, what's fair? Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Because we're planning to be finished November, I mean, in February. So we'll be done. So between now and February, we'd sure like their blessing um, okay. in some form or another. Um, you, you, construction documents in February? Yes, correct. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll be done in February. So we have between now and then to get their blessing. But we, you know, we have, as you know, we have NCDOT to, to please. We were coordinating with, with Duke on the utility. So there are other things going on. But, but um, I was thinking about it on the way here, too, because th there's part of me that thinks if they're going to Stonewall, that um, maybe it, it's, we send a letter saying we're doing the project. And maybe that gets a reaction too from the city saying, we Are we changing it, so. anything uh, related to the? I mean, Nate's nothing, an expert, nothing that Norfolk Southern really cares about, right? Nothing outside the curb at all. We, right. We're smart enough to know that. Nothing right. outside the curb. And in fact, it, as most of you probably know, we're actually doing things that that should be seen very favorably by Norfolk Southern, right. which includes fencing along fencing. their right, right of way. Right. Because right now, people can crisscross any which way they want. So by fencing and landscaping, we're going to severely restrict how people cross that railroad. And, and that should be looked at favorably. But um, it, it, my recommendation would be that we have a, a team strategy session if we, we don't hear something very soon. And maybe we force their hand by saying, OK, we haven't heard from you. We're going to go ahead and do this project. And maybe that'll get them to say something. But, but I, I wanted to be very clear that you all knew that we're staying within your pavement now right. that's out there. And there's been discussion about another option, moving the, the city walk to the north side of the road, where there's sidewalk now. 
But you understand that sidewalk is still in Norfolk Southern right of way as well, too. That that whole that whole both 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 roads both sides. And then, and then so, you have to cross back again. And then you have to right. And the north side of the road, we have all the Duke Power, all the driveways and curb cuts there. So it's it's a it's not as clean from a greenway. Of course, there's already a sidewalk there. But um, there are alternatives. We even discussed because um, we're doing this a lot in the Atlanta metro area. It, you could treat those that that's those I say two sheets because we have eleven sheets that make up the whole the whole length of the road. Those two sheets could be treated as a bike lane. You don't build the heavy construction, you just restripe and repaint and it becomes a bike bike ped lane through there. We've done that we do that a lot in Atlanta where we're painting out, solid painting out a whole a whole lane and converting it to bike pet. So yeah. we're, we're, we're working hard to keep That's it. an undesirable. No, option. that is undesirable. Yeah. I completely agree, but it, it's an option there. So at what point then, you said construction documents in February, so Correct. what is reasonable to come back to us and say, proceed as is, or we need to have this huddle? I think between, we need to know between now and February. We need to know between now and February what's going to, because we'll, we're marching ahead to, of course, with your blessing, to, to finish the 100% the drawings. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to badger him and see what we, see what we can do. But um, I don't know that I have an alternative, except that we may have to force force something. But what legal ramifications do we have if we say, well, we're just going to send them a letter and we're going to do it anyway? Well, you know, that's a radical reaction. I'm doing two other projects where the 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 the, count, the city attorney in both other locations basically use the term prescriptive rights and and sent a letter in this case it's CSX railroad and said you know we have prescriptive rights we're going to do this project and CSX. It, it would be uh, at that point it's up to the railroad to file for an injunction correct. Yeah, I mean, I would, correct. yeah I'd feel you know pretty good about our chances on yeah. that <clears throat> it's slow the process oh, down quite a bit yeah. I'm sure other county attorneys I've talked to they their city attorneys they've referred to not only do you have the right because your pavement, they've even said you have a right about six or eight feet outside that pavement because it's all part of the maintenance of the roadway. So, I mean, I'm, well, again, I'm the creative guy. It's just, I'm just talking from past projects and past experience. Um, well. But it is just that two that two block section right there. The rest of it is we're yeah. green light to go because it's well, John. What what do you think as far as uh, from a legal standpoint? That, uh, I don't see many judges uh, shutting down a project like this. It just depends on who pulls the trigger first, whether we would file an action uh, and claim prescript prescriptive rights or adverse possession, or whether we would do it and force them. It would, uh, I, I think it would behoove us to maybe have the mayor and, and some council members try to talk to a warm body at, uh, at, the, at the railroad and, and explain to them the the importance of having this done and having it done quickly and uh, you know maybe maybe if we get involved a little bit and find out who to talk to and have a meeting and explain the urgency of this it can be something where we uh, create a win-win for everybody i mean surely we can go to the office and just sit there and say hey we got this project what? we've been doing this for two years help us well I, right? I on your behalf i made a presentation at norfolk southern i went down there at six or eight of them in the room made a, a video presentation explained the whole project they just said thank you offered no comment no feedback just said thank you Woo woo. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we do have lie. legal avenues. I think we need to um, uh, also incorporate some strategy right now to uh, engage conversations with whoever the warm bodies there to get this moving. One thing would be to see on that easement, since it was traded out from when there was a switching yard downtown, there should, there's probably a recorded document down at the courthouse. We're looking. Yeah. yeah, and if there is, it may tell us in there that we already have the right to do all this I'll, stuff, I'll, and we're and I, 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 I need to have my office look at this as well, yeah. along with staff. Okay, I, I know that there's, I know going down to where WHKY is, 
which is not too far from that, mm -hmm. that there are some easement issues that are favorable to the city. And I'm just talking about past memory of some stuff I've done in the past. But okay. Well, down in that direction, I was out looking at it earlier this morning, too. I don't know how this plays into the discussions, but the, the roadway is failing in several places along there, too. If you look at it from the south side and look across to the north side, it's, it's failing. The, the, the base is starting to slough off. Um, so there's issues there that, that are affecting your roadway, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It would be nice if they would cooperate with us rather than uh, get into a... a antagonistic uh, relationship correct correct now we and we will happily work with you to arrange that meeting give you all the names see what we can do we actually working with your staff had scheduled a meeting um, to meet with them and Norfolk Southern cancels um, so we're we've tried we're, we're trying to get down there so, so um, construction drawings mean it's ready for uh, bid. Is that correct? That's so correct. Fe February on that. So right. back in December, you had suggested there might be some pieces and parts of this we could break out and accelerate. But at this point, that doesn't seem like that would be um, uh, appropriate if we are that close to construction drawings. Sure. In other words, by the time you separated something, got it sort of packaged and out for bid. Do you see this bidding as one project? Yeah, I do. Okay. And in fact, one of the things we've been, uh, the, the new section that you added fourth to ninth, we're gonna try to bring that along so the whole thing is completed okay. in February. We're trying to, even though that was just approved, we're trying to bring it all together so it's all one package. The, the, the only thing I would say is, is some of the, um, there are some things that are not eligible for DOT funding, like some of the sculptural pieces and things like that. And they're so unique that some of that we may want to either hold off or do as a separate bid. Because my, my expertise, I don't know that you want to pay general contractors markup. A paving contractor who knows how to do brick and concrete and to, to do a piece of sculpture, right, he's, he's just going to mark it up. So that some of that we might pull out. Okay. Um, I think that would be why we want that spine. We want yeah, absolutely. going and the rest of the sculptures and stuff can come as an add-on. Right, correct. And That's it would be a place for um, people in the community to do yeah. donations or any sure. type of brickwork, things like that. But I think the main concern of us is to get that spine, get it going, and then do the addition so that then we have a good cost number rather than saying, sure. here's this huge thing, now let's start taking it apart, let's get the basics done. Yeah, and our, our commitment was to try to bring forth tonight as fast as we could with what we've already done so we can get it all as one big package. That's great news that construction yeah. documents February. We're going to hold yeah. you to it, okay? Yeah. So we're going to. Yeah. So construction documents in February, it takes a little time to put the bid documents together, advertise them for this. It may be a March. March, okay. yeah. With, yeah, with it. So that's a construction start in summer. Yeah. Potentially, that's is that right? That's shovel ready. Shovel ready. Late spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's great. Okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Any further questions for Mr. Huffman? Thank you, sir. Sure, appreciate it. It is appropriate to have council approval of where we stand. Is there a motion that the, the, the plan as presented be approved? I, uh, I would move approval of the plan as presented um, um, and um, with the addition of a um, railroad coordination meeting between staff and consultants um, within three weeks. Is there a second, second. to that motion? No. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. <clears throat> Mr. Wood, back to you for the second report. Yes, sir. The second report on the bond project is a Riverwalk presentation by Glenn Walters, principal of uh, Design Workshop. Thank you for having me. Um, we're very excited about the progress we've made so far. We had a really good meeting with the bond committee and got some feedback from them on the design. And we've been working hard, so I'll try to bring you up to speed with what we've got. 
Look, I just sold it here. Right. Oh. Okay, first of all, we took to heart uh, the design principles that were part of the original concept of this, of this plan, and it was to create a comprehensive waterfront trail that was accessible to people of all ages, that it would enhance the quality of life, sense of community pride and image of Hickory, and, and through the process of creating this thing spur economic development and elevate the image and character of the city provide something artful as you entered into the city from the north side. It would be a system of walkways and trails that worked along the waterfront, exposing people to that wonderful natural environment out there. And it would also create a variety of trail experiences. There's already a rustic trail network out there. There's a greenway that's out there. This would provide uh, a trail that uh, enabled people to get on the water. And then there'll be trail connections that work upland as well to connect uh, with some of the other trails that are going on there. Most importantly, uh, we wanted to uh, work with the site and create a design that, that protected the beauty of that site right now with the trees and the rocks and the steep topography out there. Um, and, and finally, wanted to make something uh, for this city that was durable, that would last for generations, that would be a good use of public investment and something you'd be really proud of in the end. The river walk as it's currently designed would extend along the length of the river from you know, basically the bridge all the way to Geithner Park. We would start the project with an entrance road and parking lot and plaza area, and from there you would get on to the river walk. It hugs, it, 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 this, the first part projects out into the water, creating a really dynamic experience. The rest of it hugs the shoreline and creates some interesting ins and outs so that people Walking along it can, it can be next to the woods or be over the water. Uh, there's also air, uh, spots along the way where we can connect to proposed trails that would get up to the Boy Scout camp, let's say, or connect to the Greenway, as well as to connect to the existing rustic trails that exist already out there on the site. One of the things that we really wanted to make sure of is if assuming that the design of this bridge will enable it through how the railings are designed and that sort of thing, is to be able to see uh, an iconic feature from 321 as you were coming into the city. Um, we also needed to work really closely with the things that are going on at the water treatment plant. And so we early on played with different locations for where uh, the, the bridge should uh, uh, express itself best, and we pushed it in this direction so that it would be, have the most opportunity to be visible. There's a great little um, flat spot in the land where you can get on to the bridge and onto the water. And we are, have, uh, we'll show you in a minute some designs for this area to make it a really nice experience for people to come in and, and to get on the river walk. Here is this space. We have a entrance road and around 30 parking spaces down here. This was a new element that we discovered through the 30% design process before all the parking was going to be up in the park. We, th we, we learned through investigation that we could actually bring some parking down here closer to the river walk and that would be a real advantage for people. You come into the site through a tree-lined uh, uh, road that's you know laid out pretty closely to where the existing pavement is right now and that would hmm, this ran out of batteries. That would conclude at a, a little roundabout and drop off area here. And then in front of the existing building that, that sits up there right now, we thought about a small uh, park plaza uh, kind of element before you then got onto the river walk itself. This little plaza is uh, going to evolve here through the 60% design, but the idea was that you had a building there that you know, you, you, things like bathrooms, things like a trailhead, things like you know, even the opportunity maybe for a coffee shop or, 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 or what have you could possibly be um, located in that building and that building could be repurposed as part of a, of, of a park element. And then in front of that, a place to gather or to hang out. Um, we thought about some bench swings with a covered trellis so people could just sit out there at, at the river Right, and and then just enjoy being being out there um, as part of getting onto the river walk, and then you would venture out onto the water uh, on the walk itself. We also have linked to parking up above at the tennis center, 
early on I, in the concepting of the project, uh, there was thoughts about bringing a road down from that parking to access the Riverwalk. Our opinion was that that road would be really challenging to construct. It's gone really steep side slope uh, topography. But we think, and we're going to continue to work this to try to minimize grading and to minimize the loss of trees, but we think we can wind a multi-purpose trail down through that valley there so that people can park up here and, and take a trail down to, to that entrance park and plaza. And that would also provide another level of trail experience um, for people and link them back up to the, to the multi-purpose trail, right, that, that extends in front of the park. Here's a look at the iconic element that people will get onto first as they leave um, the parking lot in the small park plaza. The idea was, and Miguel Rosales, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, the Liberty Bridge in Greenville, but he designed that, very iconic, and has done amazing things for that city's uh, energy and, and, and people's image of it. Um, he's working with the team on this particular design, and what he wanted to, to, to create was something that was really light, really airy, really reflected kind of about the trees that existed behind there, so these masks are metaphors for those trees. And that there will be a section here at the very beginning that um, is quite long. It's actually about 700 feet long. So it's, a, it's also a gathering space for the city um, in addition to being a walkway that people will get onto as well as being an iconic element visible from 321. Here's another look at that. There's places, at least two places along the river walk where It'll bulb out. These, this is about 80 feet long right here, and this bench is about 36 to 40 feet long. Right, So there's places for people to sit and gather. People can continue on behind on a 12-foot walkway, or they can sit and pause and look at the river um, from these little perches that we create. The, the material here right now is a sustainable and durable wood product to reflect upon nature, also the heritage of the city. Uh, we, they talked about uh, craft and, and that sort of thing. So we thought that bringing that material into the uh, river walk would really give it a soft quality and make it much more natural. And then these poles and all the supports are stainless. This is a look sort of down the view of that iconic element. Lots of room for people to walk and bike and hang out. It'll be really neatly lit at night, right? So it becomes even more iconic at night. And also so it's safe, so people can use it. Downward facing, so we're not messing with the night sky. Mm -hmm. And you can only imagine what that would look like from 321 as you came into town. That's what's been my concern all along, is what's that going to look like from that bridge? How high is that bridge going to be? How right. far is it going to touch down past that park. I mean, it's not one you got to lean out of the wind and look over to see what's down there. Well, we've pushed, we've, we've pushed this element as far away as practical to help with that view. Mm -hmm. There's going to have to be some real intention on making sure that the railings of that bridge are tr transparent enough so you can see through them. A lot of times with bridges now, they're using those big jersey barriers and they get difficult to see. So there's some work to be done for sure on that bridge design uh, to make sure that this is as, as visible as it can be. But we've done our best with these big masts as well as pushing it um, down the river a little bit to help as much as we can. It's right to get it to, you know, the way we want to do it. Yeah. So we get one chance, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just take you through the rest of these images. So it's real simple, and then so after the iconic element, the rest of it is, is, is as simply constructed as we can make it. We have a lot of length to get all the way to Geithner Park. Um, it's still going to be very beautiful in its simplicity, but it's, it, we, didn't, we, you know, we, we really wanted to put a lot of emphasis here and then to protect the budget by making it a, a clean, beautiful, simple walkway that got from, be, from beginning to end. Right, so it's still 12 feet wide simple railings and then simple light poles and, and the whole support structure becomes different in order to accommodate um, making it more economical. And we think it'll be pretty beautiful. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, questions and discussion of council. You don't have any renderings of after you get off the bridge and start on the land what the trail is in on the clock? No, sir. We're, that came, that idea came to us a little later in the process. So one of the first things we're going to do is try to understand the, the best route to take a hard surface trail up from, here I'll show you where it'll be. Kick it all the way back here. Um, you know, right around this location, there's a little draw, and we'll, we'll, we'll want to find a great way to get a hard surface trail up to the Boy Scout camp area and then connecting into the existing greenway, but we haven't laid that out yet. That's one of the first things we're going to do. It's going to require a lot of blasting, I would think. Well, hopefully not, um, but I hear what you're saying. It's one of the reasons why the trail ended up on the water to begin with. It's really difficult terrain out there. There's rock outcrops. It's really steep. So, um, and, and our real motivation is not to ruin that landscape out there because that's a big part of the whole experience of, of, of being on trails and, and being out there by the river. So we're going to work really hard to minimize as much as we can the <coughs> impact of getting that trail from, from you know, down below up, up to the existing greenway. And we found, you know, we found a link that would, that would work. Now it's just a matter of getting out there on site and really working the maps and making sure that we do that in the right way. Um, any consideration on the transition into the bridge that we're going to take over? You know, the... Uh, over here the, somewhere? The, the, the newest 321 bridge. Right. Which we have decided or we have talked to the DOT about accepting that bridge mm. uh, rather than them tearing it down. Mm -hmm. And is there, I see no transition down there at the bottom line. Would Right. Is that being considered? That this whole area, I keep struggling with my little, right this there. whole area we do need to look at because there's great reasons to try to get under the bridge as well or get across the road so that you open up that whole yeah. other end mm -hmm. of the lake for future well, as well as linking. Hmm? Under the the well, the new span I think is going to enable you to go under right. there. Yeah. And then as well as, you know, what, what the impact of, of taking over this other bridge might be. So there's some work to be done there okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, but we're, we're aware of that. And, and the old what a fantastic range. thing to be able to, to make that connection across. The old pistol range could be used for additional parking also, right? Well, it's tricky to get up there. It's really steep. Is it? Yeah, yes, sir. And, and so that's one of the reasons why there used to be a road in the plan that came down along this area. And I think there was an idea about that. The side slopes are so great there that, that we um, recommended moving <laughs> I keep moving as much parking as we could down on site to make it really convenient and then bringing a multi-purpose trail down through that slope which would have a much narrower dimension and would be easier to grade into there so people could ride a bike or, it or, or walk like down. It seems like we need to find some more parking. That doesn't seem adequate. Um, if, it's as popular as I envisioned it yep. to be. Yeah. Well, there's, so there's so about 30 down there. There'll be parking at Geithner Park as well, and then there'll sure. be the parking up at the park. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the study might also include how to best link all the parking that's around there, right, <coughs> into a network that can get on a trail and get down to that. So uh, this is 30 percent. Is that right? That's right. So so that's right. We we were given the concept. Uh, we we worked with that concept and the principles to try to come up with the best way of getting <coughs> from end to end and provide the best experience we could. Um, quantified it, costed it, got it to you know to understand uh, the subsurface conditions of the of the Solid lake rock. well enough so that we could make a good cost estimate yeah. out of it and and brought it back to the bond commission for their uh, input and approval. Uh, the gentleman out here had. How does this work into the existing mountain bike trails that are in there? Yep. Is that is there it is part of it. We're gonna we want to work with those trails for sure. You know, but and and I think that information is still evolving. So yeah, but we're we definitely want to get eventually get all of the trails that are out there located so that we can make as much connectivity as we can. Extensive ones that go back and forth in that area. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've actually been in conversation with the mountain bike guys that are designing all that and then up with Mac and so we coordinate. Yeah. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not, let me, let me go back to, uh, this is not a public hearing at this point. This is a council discussion. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah, uh, on the permitting things, I, you know, I appreciate Mr. Huffman's candor and, and, and um, <coughs> as we talk about the railroad here, I think that sort of the elephant in the room is, I guess, Duke Energy, yep. right? And FERC. Yep. So tell me what your experience has been with them so far. So far, good, right? We, we took the concept early on to them because there was going to be, you know, there was an element that's always been out into the water, and we knew they'd be a big player in that. Um, you know, there was questions about the distance out into the waterway. There was questions about the height of the bridge relative to the pool elevation. And we've designed with those, with their <coughs> thoughts in mind. Um, but it's going to be a process to get through the, you know, through that approval, and um, you know, some of that too depend. The, a, a thought was that that would combine with the Geithner Park as well because they would be going through for a process as well. So there's some strategy that has to be nailed down related to the, you know, well, whether we, this. We've hired on. somebody. I mean. We're not responsible for the design, permitting, and construction drawings for Geithner Park. That's correct. That's yeah. That's correct. So we need you guys to stay with us on permitting for this. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're only looking for efficiencies where we can. Uh, yeah. Well, sure. You sure, know. Yeah. And, but yes, that 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 is that is the critical path mm -hmm. in terms of getting from you know sixty percent design th to construction is is obtaining that for permit yeah so did, did Duke talk about their shoreline management um, provision on bridges that requires 12 feet above full pond yeah and and they're okay with only being five feet well, based on our initial discussions okay. they that you know those were the requirements that they gave us and we've been designing to perfect those. perfect that's good. Other questions of council? Any other further any further discussion? Mayor, Matt, just in the spirit of asking the same quick schedule, the next steps. Yep. Right. So we've done thirty percent. We've you know we've we've presented this. Um, now we're presenting it to you. Um, we're beginning sixty percent, <coughs> right? Getting our getting things organized, getting to topographic surveying we need, and those sorts of things. That uh, so that started the. The 90% uh, will start, according to this schedule right now, will start in May of 2018, right? The permitting keeps extending along, so we're overlapping design with the permitting process to try to keep things clipping along. And right now we have construction beginning in December of 2018. And that's to time with getting for permitting and getting our, you know, everything we need to start <coughs> constructing. So I've been, to, I've been told that like a FERC permit can be 12 months. Um, I, you know, I don't know. McGill's your partner, right? That's, that's handling right. the permit. That's right. Yeah. Is that something maybe you can check with him, have him bounce it? You bet. All city staff, bet. make sure we are green light on we permits. Will, that will be the first thing we do is to revisit the permitting path, and, and we should probably get together with Duke again, too. Just at each stage, I think that we'll need to be clear, you know, about where all that is. and and what we think the timeline is for that. So, uh, so help me again, 60% 60, uh, 60 drawings are when? I mean, we have 11 months in here for FERC in the schedule right now, but. Yeah, but yeah, you said, yeah, okay, but it's, and it's running, con but it's yeah, running that's concurrently right. That's right. with that, so you haven't made a submittal to FERC. Not yet. Right. No, that's correct. So if we have to do a submittal to FERC and then wait 11 months. No, but oh. what I'm saying is that we're, that, that, that start date that I mentioned of December 2008 considers a, a length for FERC of 11 months. We've just, we're overlapping uh, design gotcha, gotcha. across so, so that. So you'll be, you'll be submitting yeah. sometime early next year to FERC. Yeah, we've got a uh, submittal to FERC starting, yeah, like February. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good deal. So, and then, I'm sorry, on the 60%, um, I heard the construction documents December of 18, 60%. Uh, We've got that concluding in May of May. 18. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You need construction about a year from now. Mr. Yeah. December 18. December we got to get busy. 
Any other questions or discussion for Mr. Walters? Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it is appropriate to cancel uh, that action be approved. Is there a motion to approve the plans as presented? Second. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries and the plan is approved. Mr. Mayor, just, just to be abundantly clear while Mr. Huffman and uh, Mr. Walters, so the two things you heard tonight, schedule and cost. Yes, sir. Schedule and cost. I had a, I did a civic club presentation the other day and the question was what, ha what happens if we go over budget there is no over budget <laughs> there, there's, on budget we and, there's on budget and under budget yes sir okay. and it's on schedule yep. and uh freezing nickels will be doing a new master schedule uh that will update uh these dates and that will be riding them on mr mm -hmm. okay. thank you for that clear yep. yes thank you very clear thank you that was clear thank you thank you all thank you